Hello everybody, my name is Manu S. Welcome to another Eternal Top Decks video series here on my channel. Today we're going to talk about Fallon Control, the premier control deck in the game right now. Um, so let's dive right in. First off, we have the removal suit of 4 Permafrost, 3 Suffocate, 2 Annihilate, 4 Lightning Storm, um, 2 Lightning Strike, 4 Varus Favor, and 3 Death Strike. Permafrost is basically our cheapest and most flexible removal. It answers everything outside of Sandstorm Titan and um, Champion of Glory. Um, the other thing it basically doesn't answer very efficiently are units with like uh, Empower uh, stuff like Mystic Ascendant or Martial Iron Throne. But, um, other than that, it deals with most annoying things, and it even deals with Entomb units without triggering the Entomb. To, for example, to buy us time to find a steward of the past before they actually die, which is particularly relevant against Umbern Reaper or Soulfire Drake, for example. Since delaying the effect of a Soulfire Drake uh, Entomb is pretty big, because that makes it so the opponent uh, has fewer turns of drawing charge and flying units that fly over our blockers and charge into our face before we can get them with some of our removal that's not a fast that's not at spell speed. Um, next we have Suffocate. It's another really great early game removal. It's a bit more restricted than Permafrost, but um, still pretty effective. Um, it especially because it can deal with Champion of Glory, which Permafrost can't at least as long as it's not enhanced by anything and at its three or less strengths. The card uh, can also deal with more stuff than Torch, for example, would be able to in Falnscar, which is nice. It can kill stuff like all the units in our deck, basically. Bloodcaster, Steward of the Past, Witch, Harbinger, but also Combray Healer, Seraph, uh, Statuary Maiden, all these type of cards that a torch wouldn't be able to deal with and this deals with for one mana, uh, for one power. So basically we get a lot of tempo out of this and get to kill a lot of important units with it. It's just a little unreliable, especially because some Combray variants run Obelisk and then Suffocate quickly can't kill a Seraph anymore, for example, because it's a 4-5. So that's why there's only three. Permafrost is a bit more flexible in that regard. Next we have Annihilate. A bit more expensive than the other two options, also more limited, but great at dealing with stuff like Martial Iron Shorn, Mystic Ascendant, Sandstorm Titan, all these like 3 plus uh, power units that we really want to have removed from the game. Also obviously deals with stuff like Impending Doom, Umbern Reaper, uh, Soulfire Drake, Weapon Carrying or Warcry Trigger Enhanced, Rakano units outside of Champion of Glory. So it still has a lot of targets and it has the upside of being a fast spell. It's very possible that there uh, could or should be a third one. Currently I only have two because the uses are sometimes a bit limited, but it's nice to have some fast spell removal for sure and something that deals with 4 plus casting cost units um, for cheap. Lightning Storm is basically our early game sweeper, absolutely critical against decks like Jido, because basically the Jido matchup revolves around this card. If we don't draw a Lightning Storm by turns 3 or 4 usually, uh, we have barely any chance of winning against them in my experience. Jido just is so good against this deck that Lightning Storm is what we need to like uh, make up for that. The card is so good that it usually helps us win the game if we cast it on a, a medium-sized board in the first couple turns, but if we fail to do that, there's usually not much we can do uh, to win the game, in my experience. It also can team up with a Withering Witch to um, to wipe the board on 7, for example. A makeshift one-sided Harsh Rule. can also combine it with cards like Varus Favor to, for example, Lightning Storm and then kill that uh, remaining 3 health unit with a virus favor. Sometimes also nice against certain uh, Burn Queen and Rakano Agro draws. Uh, or you can uh, 
hold on to it and eventually you'll get to a point where you have two and then have a decent board sweeper if you cast both because a lot of things die to four damage in one turn. Um, Lightning Strike is mostly a concession to Relic Weapons, Charge Chain Flame and Maul out of Stone Scar midrange, um, Sword of Ikaria out of Rakano, um, Auric Runehammer out of uh, out of some decks, especially Armory, can sometimes even get a Daisho if it's unenhanced, which won't happen that often. Um, it's also a decent removal, kills quite a quite a lot of things in the early game, early to mid game, if they don't have relic weapons. Uh, given the recent rise in Stone Scar decks with weapons, it might be very possible that we even want the third one because Stone Scar Maul is quite scary actually for this deck, especially because it can bash into a Felm Bloodcaster then survive as a 6-1 weapon and keep hitting our face if we don't have another blocker or a virus favor to finish it off. So that's something to keep in mind. Last we have Death Strike. This card is actually pretty bad but a necessary evil simply because it kills everything. While it is really expensive at doing so, which is kind of the opposite of what removal is supposed to be. Removal is supposed to be cheap to catch us uh, back up on tempo especially if we waste tempo on cards like Wisdom of the Elders and Favors and stuff. Uh, we need cheap removal to make up for that loss in tempo uh, to have cheaper answers for more expensive threats to not get run over. I think 3 is the maximum you can run. There's people that run 4. I think that's very bad. Um, this deck can easily lose games by drawing too many death strikes too early. Sure, in the late game it doesn't matter anymore, but in the late game we usually win anyway, so um, what we care about is surviving uh, until then and cheap removal is what gets us there. So 3 is the maximum. If you ever draw, like, have these like two Death Strike hands, uh, it makes me feel like I want to kill myself um, because you usually need to be able to do multiple things in a turn, like play a unit in a removal, a card draw spell in a removal, and Death Strike doesn't let you do that. But it is necessary, especially for cards like Champion of Glory that are bigger than 3 strength, and Ikaria, which we otherwise have no good way of dealing with, so that's why they are there. If those cards wouldn't exist, I would probably run 2 at best, or even less, and just run more um, Annihilate, for example. Um, next we have the units. 4 Fan Bloodcaster, 4 Steward of the Past, Two Champion of Cunning, three Withering Witch, four Black Sky Harbinger, and one Vara Fate Touched. Bladcaster is a great card, basically a multi-purpose card in the deck. It's a great early game blocker. Two five is great stats, blocks most early game units, kills half of them while blocking them, so makes it really awkward for the opponent to attack into it a lot of the time. And the ultimate basically is an attached free Wisdom of the Elders, making it also one of our card advantage engines in the late game and in slower matchups. Uh, which brings me to an important point in slower matchups where you're not under pressure, especially in the mirror, just don't play the guy. Don't play it into the opposing suffocates, just hold on to it, wait till you eventually get to 10 power, play it and activate it right away, and you will see uh, if your opponent exposes their bloodcaster to you and you get to kill it, that you will pull ahead a ton by not doing that and actually getting to draw two cards from each bloodcaster that you draw while your opponent throws theirs away into our suffocates. Next we have Steward of the Parst, another pretty good blocker at 5 health. Uh, Deadly makes sure that it kills everything it blocks, usually, even if it dies itself. So you can sometimes use it as pseudo-removal by just trading it for a big attacker. Um, the summon trigger helps us retrospectively shut down the enemy void, which is really good against uh, cards like um, Stash, for example, since if all they get back is vanilla bodies rather than all their utility mid-range grind units, that is a pretty big deal. It also suppresses various Entomb triggers like the mentioned Reaper and Soulfire Drake, for example, so it's a really good way of shutting down various advantage engines from other like aggressive and mid-range decks, which is exactly what we need to um, yeah, basically stabilize 
and not lose in the late game to a Soul Fire Drake trigger or um, an Umbran Reaper uh, that deals the last five damage to us because while we can kill it so it doesn't attack us to death, the Entomb trigger is enough to kill us. Um, next we have Champion of Cunning. Uh, the unit has like some mixed feelings. Um, usually you don't want to play it without the Flying Aegis enabled. Um, but then it's actually a pretty good threat and even a decent blocker. 5-5 five, five for 5 is pretty good stats. The Flying makes for a good attacker and good blocker. Uh, and the second ability helps us turn all our random value units that are lying around into some serious threats and end the game pretty quickly. The problem is that it is fairly expensive at 5 power and doesn't really do much else than win the game. And yeah, in a control deck you usually want all your cards to help you survive uh, rather than basically have their only purpose be end the game once we end the late game. Because once we end the late game and stabilize we have just card advantage and random units that are left over that can do that for us. Which is why I, uh, you usually want to run as few um, units that have a few cards in general that have the sole purpose and sole effect on the game of ending the game for you because these control decks have the habit of usually finding some way to end the game once they take control of the game. Uh, three withering which only three because drawing multiples can be awkward and it needs to be comboed with other cards to be really good. Um, this is basically the one two punch of stabilization for this deck. Turn five witch into turn six harbinger. You can also as already mentioned use it on turn seven as a one sided harsh roll in one turn with lightning storm for example. Um, and it's also a decent blocker. Harbinger aside from comboing with witch is just another really good way of uh, getting uh, some tempo back, getting some life back, stabilizing. Usually it can clear up some random chaff that's lying around with one health. Um, even if it doesn't, it usually allows us to gain two, three, four life the turn we play it and then get three life a turn uh, after that per turn from attacking, uh, getting us all the life back that we lost and make sure that we uh, can realize the card advantage that we have over our opponent before they just kill us with some charge unit or burn spell for example. And last we have one Vara Fate Touched which is basically the definition of an uh, I win only card since the card at 8 power has no other purpose of uh, than ending the game. Which is why it's a bit questionable. It's possible that it should be a third champion of cunning for example or just like another spell. But uh, it is nice to have some added late game power for the mirror and matchups like Big Combre, just other slower uh, control mid-range decks that are trying to overpower their opponent since Vara is a pretty impressive uh, power play. Like imagine turn 8 you drop a Vara, get back a Harbinger or Champion of Cunning or even just a Bloodcaster to draw more cards. It's pretty powerful and if she lives for more than a turn then the opponent is in serious trouble usually. <coughs> so it's just kind of like a nice uh, over the top power play to try and overpower other slower decks. Um, last we gotta talk about the power base. 25 base power, 6 favors and 2 seek makes for 33 power which is quite a lot which I already mentioned. This deck needs a lot of power, needs to hit power drops up to like turn 8 or something. Uh, we run as many dual power cards as we can. 3 seal is like the maximum this deck can usually take because multiple seals can be really awkward uh, for fixing all our double cost cards and uh, helping Champion of Cunning to reach 5 of each influence. But uh, 3 make our opening hands a lot better since every hand that only has one color of influence um, can easily lose us the game and um, it helps us fix our turn 3 Wisdom of the Elders and Found Bloodcaster, our turn 1 removal, and even kind of helps with setting up Champion of Cunning removal if we have them in our opening, uh, Champion of Cunning influence if we have them in our opening hand. So 
the first two or three um, basically uh, add more to the deck than they hurt, but the fourth is where it starts kind of going downhill, which is why three is a nice number so we don't draw multiples too often and especially not too late in the game. Uh, Seek Power basically has the same role. If we could cut a Shadow Sigil and a Primal Sigil for more Seek Power, we would probably do that. But the way it is, I'd rather have more favors than more Seek Power because the powers, uh, the influence is fairly good and stable in the deck, and having added value from Sigils in the form of favors is a pretty big deal for a 33 power deck that tries to trade with the opponent and make the game go long where card advantage matters. So we have two Eileen's favor. This is really nice because it allows us to protect ourselves from big burn spells in the late game like uh, Umbran Reaper triggers, um, Flame Blast or Obliterate. It also helps us protect our staff of stories from sad cards while also being a primal sigil which is a great dual purpose. And Virus favor is basically even better. We already talked about it. It's a shadow sigil with a with a small conditional removal attached to it and an extra point of life for us, which is just a great all-in-one, basically, which is why there's four. And there's plenty of X1s in the game that this this can kill or help finish off with a lightning storm and stuff like that, or just pop ages so our removal can take care of the unit. Um, that's it for the deck. Um, if there's any questions, anything you still want to know, still want to have, explained let me know in the comments i'm happy to answer any questions um, or if you have any opinions on how the deck should look if you think something should be different let me know if and why as usual don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on social media for more updates um, stay tuned for the two game videos following this one um, See you in a moment with the first half of the games.